Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Targeted killings of Kashmiri Hindus becoming alarming. Taliban obliterating Afghan women's rights. And uncertainty looms large in Taliban ruled Afghanistan. Let's begin the show. Since the center announced its decision that it would abrogate Jammu and Kashmir's special status and bifurcated it into two union territories, terrorists have repeatedly attempted to divide Hindus and Muslims by carrying out targeted killings. Terrorists in Kashmir have targeted and killed Kashmiri pundits and non-local Hindus. The same is being attempted in the Jammu region. Recently, Pakbak terrorists killed at least six people and wounded a dozen others of Hindu community in Rajori district of the region. On January 1st, around 7 p.m., two heavily armed terrorists made their way through the forests and barged into three houses of the Hindu community and opened fire at those residing inside. This incident happened in Rajari district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. Terrorists reportedly first verified the victims' identities using their Aadhaar cards. Ten people were shot, four of them were taken to the hospital and declared dead. Just a day after this dastardly terror attack, a blast occurred near the house of one of the victims of first incident. As per police officials, an ID was planted by the terrorists. The explosion claimed the lives of two children, including a five-year-old boy and another young child, and injured four others. और उनका इलाज चल रहा है कुछ इलाज रजौरी के हॉस्पिटल में चल रहा है कुछ लोगों का इलाज जम्मू के हॉस्पिटल में चल रहा है इसके बाद आज सुबह जब तलाशी चल रही थी तब एक और यहां पे धमाका हुआ ऐसा लगता है कि आईडी बहुत तरीके से किसी बोरे के नीचे प्लांट की गई थी जिसके अंदर धमाका हुआ उस पे एक बच्चे की डेथ हुई है और सात लोग और इंजर्ड हैं उसमें the attack followed the killing of four suspected Pakistani lashkar e taiba terrorists in an hour-long shootout on December 28 and the discovery of an improvised explosive device on December 26. Since the center announced its decision that it would abrogate Jammu and Kashmir's special status and bifurcate it into two union territories, Terrorists have repeatedly attempted to divide Hindus and Muslims by carrying out targeted killings. Terrorists in Kashmir have targeted and killed Kashmiri Pandits and non-local Hindus. The same is being attempted in the Jammu region. However, local Muslims showed a great deal of support for Hindus and Pandits when terrorists attacked Kashmiri Pandits and non-locals in 2021. Muslim condemned the terrorist conduct and chastised them for killing unarmed civilians. In Jammu region, they have once again been given a befitting reply as the people have understood that Pakistan and the terror bosses sitting across the line of control want to pit two communities against each other to vitiate peace. हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख ईसाई तमाम लोग मिलकर इसका मुकाबला करेंगे और दूसरा जो है ये जो हमारा सिक्योरिटी ऑपरेटर्स का फेलियर वो भी देखना चाहिए कि वो कहां पे फेलियर है क्यों ऐसी इंसिडेंट्स हो रहे हैं इसके ऊपर भी रियासती हुकूमत को और मरकजी हुकूमत को ध्यान देना चाहिए कि ये लोग कहां से आ रहे हैं कैसे आ रहे हैं और कौन लोग हैं जो ये कदम उठा रहे हैं द नेबरिंग कंट्री स्टैंड्स एक्सपोज्ड पाकिस्तान बाय इट्स एक्शंस हैज प्रूवन बियॉन्ड डाउट दैट इट्स अ टेररिस्ट स्टेट and the terrorists are part of its state policy. They have been groomed to kill innocents and bleed India. 
Hindus and Muslims coming together in Jammu and Kashmir is a clear message to extremist and radical elements that their actions won't deter the Jammu and Kashmir people from taking the fight against terrorism to its logical end. Pakistan has tried to represent itself as a victim of terrorism. Pakistan claims to have made significant sacrifices to exterminate the terror and violence that plagued the nation. The truth is that a new more radicalized society has already begun to emerge as a result of the unholy alliance between the military establishment, civil government and Islamic clerics in Pakistan. When some of the most wanted terrorists in the world have been found sheltering there, how has Islamabad managed to play the victim? Let's take a look at some of the politics that are going on. If you have snakes in your backyard, you can't expect them to bite only your neighbors. Eventually, they will bite the people who keep them in the backyard. Indian External Affairs Minister Jai Shankar recently criticized Pakistan for harboring terrorists and reminded the country that it will have to face the effects of homegrown extremism. Unfortunately, Pakistan, as expected, has not heeded Jai Shankar's advice and is suffering the consequences. Several jihadi outfits, who had always been priceless assets of the Pakistani government and military, have now emerged as a serious security threat for Islamabad. This potential threat was first identified eight years ago when the intensity and cruelty of the attack on the Army Public School in Peshawar by the Tehriki Taliban shocked the entire world. Pakistan has since witnessed many more attacks on educational institutes, such as the 2016 assault on the Bacha Khan University and the burning down of schools in Gilgit Baltistan's Daimar district in 2018. Last year's Taliban victory in Kabul, which was facilitated by Islamabad, emboldened several Islamist groups in Pakistan, including the TTP. Following the surge and several terror attacks claimed by the TTP, the Pakistani government has also attempted to reach an agreement with the jihadist group. However, last month, the TTP ended the month-long ceasefire agreement with Pakistani authorities and began launching terrorist attacks again all over the country. Pakistan always believes that the, the neighborhood should be unstable. Given this belief, Pakistan has always thought that if the Taliban of Afghanistan comes to power in Kabul, it will benefit from the same. However, it does not, has not realized so far that if you breed instability in other countries, that instability can have a backlash in your own country. Several analysts inside and outside of Pakistan have criticized the Pakistani government for giving concessions to the Tehriki Taliban Pakistan. These analysts have opined that Pakistan's morally impractical practice of negotiating with the radical groups legitimizes terrorist aims. Successive governments in the Islamic Republic have always flirted with dangerous religious fanatics festering across Pakistan and aiding the growth of international terror organizations. These terror organizations have now mutated into two categories. One wing targets democracies like India, the United States, and the European Union, while the other practices a violent insurgency in Pakistan itself to establish a puritanical, violent order that intends to wipe out the last vestiges of civilized Pakistani society. Pakistan has lost thousands of lives in the country, but still, the country has not changed its strategy. Failing to persecute several leaders of UN proscribed terror groups, and even going as far as to ensure their protection, Pakistan is directly assisting the burgeoning Islamic terrorist threat in the country. Pakistan has long failed to take appropriate action to combat terrorism within and outside of the country. The country is now facing the consequences of its inaction, and those suffering the most continue to be Pakistani citizens.
Moving on. Afghanistan continues to witness terror attacks and there is no peace, despite the takeover by the Taliban. The people are dying in violence perpetrated by other terror groups like the Islamic State. The country welcomed the new year by witnessing a series of attacks and counter-attacks. We have a report. The year 2023 in Afghanistan begins with bloodshed and violence. An explosion occurred outside the military airport in Kabul city, in which 10 people were killed and 8 others were injured. The explosion site is located on airport road, which connects to neighborhoods with high levels of security and is home to government agencies, foreign embassies and the presidential palace. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. Such horrific incidents indicate the rising uncertainty in the war-torn nation. In 2022, the reason you saw, um, well, I wouldn't say an uptick of violence, but you saw so many blasts and things happening, is because remember the Taliban was never one homogenous group. It was always composed of uh, you know, uh, a, a traditional tribal confederacy, uh, which is what all Afghan empires in the past have also been. Uh, a tr essentially a traditional tribal confederacy with some kind, some semblance of central rule. And in this kind of a scenario, you will always have, you know, rebellious warlords, rebellious factions. According to the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project, the anti-Taliban armed groups known as National Resistance Front, have ramped up attacks on Taliban forces. ACLED has recorded over 300 battles between NRF and Taliban in the first six months of 2022. The National Resistance Front of Afghanistan is a military alliance of former Northern Alliance members and other anti-Taliban fighters loyal to the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. The Islamic State has also intensified attacks on Taliban forces in 2022. A recent upswing in ICE activity reversed a decrease in early 2022 that came as Taliban forces conducted operations against Islamic State militants. Perpetrators of violence targeting civilians are often unidentified. A third of all incidents last year were committed by unknown actors. Targets of these attacks included journalists, civil society activists and former security personnel. Maintaining law and order in Afghanistan remains a challenge for the Taliban-led government in Kabul. police ability, the military ability has always been extremely low to enforce law and uh, development is still on, you know, uh, non-existent, mostly it's tribal norms out there. So this was number one. Number two, what happens since the Soviet invasion and the Afghan Jihad is what little state capacity existed has been uh, destroyed totally. It's a broken society and broken societies, conflict societies tend to have very high criminality. So uh, it is the combination of these two. Plus the third factor now where, you know, at least uh, previously the uh, uh, installed government uh, had some kind of capacity. The Taliban literally has uh, even less capacity than the previous government in that sense. So when you combine the first two factors with this, you begin to understand exactly why Afghanistan is an unsafe place today. Insecurity has also increased along the country's periphery, marked by clashes and airstrikes on the Pakistan-Afghanistan border and occasional escalations in violence on the Iran-Afghanistan border. Dozens of such violence clashes at these borders were reported in the year gone by. The tension continues to prevail as incidents are being reported where neighboring state forces engaged in clashes with the Taliban. They even perpetrated direct attacks against Afghan civilians, 
or fired artillery or launched air strikes into Afghan territory. Taliban rule has had a devastating impact on Afghan women. Since their takeover in August 2021, the Taliban has restricted women's freedom and has failed to fulfill any commitments regarding girls' education and women's rights. Women who hoped the Taliban would reform their extreme views have been let down by the new stringent restrictions imposed on them. In the latest, the Taliban regime has banned university education for women in the country until further notice. According to a letter by Higher Education Minister, Taliban have announced closure of all public and private universities for women. Rafat and Hasti, these two university students in Kabul are heartbroken as their dreams have been shattered after the Taliban-run administration suspended women from tertiary education. Rafat and Hasti are worried about their futures as all their hopes, plans, and dreams have been shattered. شب تا صبح ما هم دوستا بیدار بودیم اصلا خواب به چشم ما نمی آمد زمانی که صبح شد ما فکر کردیم دیگر زندگی و خانم ها در افغانستان وجود نداره چون همه امو راه ها و چیزایی را که ما به خاطر تحقق رویه ها و اهداف ما می پیمودیم بر ما بستن The scenes outside universities in Afghanistan turned emotional as soon as the Higher Education Ministry announced the decision to bar women from attending classes. Many students expressed their anger at the Taliban, who swept to power in August of 2021. The Taliban initially promised that any progressive achievements would not be reversed and that their rule would be moderate. However, they have failed to live up to their promises. In Jalalabad city, for example, a protest was held outside the university. Protesters held signs and chanted slogans attempting to seek justice. The ban on women students is likely to complicate the Taliban administration's efforts to gain international recognition and to remove sanctions that are severely hampering Afghanistan's economy. The recent decision to ban women has drawn condemnation from foreign governments and the United Nations. What it is, it's clearly another broken promise from the Taliban. Um, we have seen since their takeover, uh, and also in the past months, just a lessening of the space for women, uh, not only in education, but access to public areas. Um, their non-participation in, in the public uh, debate. It's another very troubling, uh, troubling move, and, and it's, it's difficult to imagine how a country can develop, uh, can deal with all of its, the challenges that it has without the active participation of, of women and the education of women. The Taliban's decision to restrict women from education drew fierce rebuke from the G7 and even the Arab world. India also condemned the Taliban's decision and said New Delhi has consistently supported women's education in Afghanistan. The United States, has the United States said that a change in policies on women's education is needed before it can formally consider recognizing the Taliban-run administration in Kabul. The reality on the ground, more than one year after the Taliban takeover, is dire. The Taliban has restricted the enjoyment of human rights by women and girls. This includes their right to education, movement, and peaceful assembly, as well as women's right to work. According to the United Nations, human rights violations against women and girls have increased significantly in Afghanistan since the Taliban takeover. It said, the Taliban has systematically excluded women and girls from public life and has failed to fulfill its initial promises of providing rights to women within Sharia law. In May of 2022, the Taliban decreed that women must cover their faces in public 
and instructed them to remain in their homes, except in cases of necessity. Women are also banned from traveling long distances without a male chaperone, and unchaperoned women are increasingly being denied access to essential services. Barring women from higher education is another nail in the coffin for the long-suffering women of Afghanistan. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.